Okay, so this is the technique. Basically, what we're going to try to do is remove the outer coating of the chips by dissolving it in acetone. Now, within these chips, you basically have a hybrid with surface mount devices. Since the ceramic hybrid isn't going to be affected by the acetone, what you can pretty much do is dissolve the outer, I don't know, thermoplastic resin coating with the acetone, pull it off, and once you've removed it all, what I have found is that the chips seem to recover quite well. So the two series chips I have are a 817A and the, the lot number this is a 44A and the other one is an 817-0 and the lot number is 41B. So the trick is I'm gonna pour some acetone into this glass, a little tiny glass cup, just enough pretty much to cover both chips, not a lot. And then I'm gonna close that. Now the thing about acetone is it it, it it uh, evaporates pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the chips in there and make sure they're completely covered. And then I put them in a coffee can, basically like this. Just pop them in there. Make sure I get it done right. There we go. And just let them soak. And so what I do is I cover up the coffee can and let the acetone soak. And I'm going to let this sit overnight or for a good 12 to 18 hours. And then we'll try to pull off some of the thermoplastic coating. Now credit where credit is due, I did not come up with this method. I've used a heat gun in the past to try to pull the plastic off and that worked but it was very problematic and I was worried about damaging the chips because the heat that you need to melt that stuff is pretty significant. But the acetone is seems like a much safer way to do it and it seems to pull it off much better. So I'll come back in about a day and we'll see how much we can actually pull off. The guy who came up with the acetone soak concept, his name is Ramker, or at least that's his username on Flickr. And he had uh, showed an 817A hybrid with all of this stuff removed, so I emailed him and he told me he soaked it in acetone for greater than 24 hours. So that's what we're doing here. So I'll see you in about 24 hours. Okay, it's about 24 hours later and I've got the coffee can with the acetone soak in it and I've got the tools that I'm going to use to hopefully be able to remove the, thermo the resin from the chips. So I've got an X-Acto knife and I've got a pair of tweezers, so let's give this a try and see what we have. So I open it up and I look at here and it's actually surprising to me because it seems like one of the chips has already had most of the resin come off. And that's this one right here, so we can take a look at that. And so we can see that a lot of the resin's already come off, so let's just pull that side off. That's pretty handy. So that comes out pretty easy. And then what I've done in the past is I just kind of use the X-Acto to sort of cut away the edges. You can hear it scraping on the ceramic hybrid that's there. And I think this makes it easier to make do the removal. I'll go along here like this, on the very edge. Pull on that. Now it may not have soaked all the way through completely, which is why the sharp X-Acto is pretty good. And to be honest, I may end up soaking these a little longer just to make sure that these, these resin comes off pretty easy. So that's most of it. So I can pull more of the backside off and you can see and the backside is probably not critical. So here you can see I've got this coming off like that. Let me see if I can get that off with the uh, tweezers. So again not so concerned with the backside as I am with the component side. So you can see the outline of the components here underneath the resin. So some of it's already lifting but it's probably not all going to come off. So we'll, we'll just take out as much can, and if we have to soak it longer, we will. Okay. So I'm taking off more of the edging. Careful not to damage anything, but the edge is usually a pretty good place not to damage something. So. So you can see I'm slowly pulling some of this off. And again, this looks like it's going to need a little more soak mostly because it's not all coming off in one big sheet. So instead of forcing it, I think what I'm going to do is just expose the edges like I did. See the white on there, the ceramic. Pull off whatever I can because if I leave an edge there, I think the acetone will have the ability to soak in and pull off some more. And I think that's, well here's some more. See this is coming off like that. Right here at the conductors or the pins. You can see I'm pulling that off like this. 
So that's coming off, but we still aren't really getting to the components, which is where I think the, the problem here lies with these chips, is when this resin is next to the components. My hypothesis is that this stuff becomes either conductive or capacitive at temperature or at elevated temperature and starts to foul up the circuitry. So I don't want to be too much. So I'm, I pulled off this much. I'm going to let the rest soak for an amount of time. I don't want to damage the components when I remove this. So he'll go back in and see what I can do with the other one. So this one, see, he had a little bubbling. And you can see that it's bubbled where it shouldn't have, where it was. So again, I'm going to take off the edges. This one's very loose. And we'll do this guy. And that, you can see that this is just really wants to come off after soaking in the acetone. It really just sort of reduces its connection. Okay. Oop. We'll go here. And here we can see this is coming off quite a bit. There's still some residual here. But pretty well coming off this one. And you can see a lot of that comes right off. And so far it's been my experience that the acetone doesn't seem to damage the components or the hybrid traces. Although there is some gunk left in here. This and so my goal is not not a hundred percent clean, although long term I may go there. I think what I'm gonna do is turn it off right now and we're going to come back to it when I get it more clean. So again, this is what I'm after. Okay, you can see I got it pretty clean. This is the front side and there's a little bit of crumbs left over, mostly between the uh, the IC pins, the surface mount IC pins. There's a little bit here, but most of it's been cleaned off. I've actually labeled the back to tell me when I you know, cleaned it off and where I got it from and what uh, series chip it was so I can just keep track of that. I'm going to do a whole series of these over the next couple weeks just to make sure that this technique actually works, but this is my labeling for now. And the idea is basically just get all that that stuff off there. And you can see I used a, added to my arsenal, I used a toothbrush to kind of scrub off uh, soaked in acetone, kind of scrub it and get it between the pins to see if it'll work. What I'll do now is install it on the HS60 and let it sit there for maybe, you know, I'll check it every half hour and make sure that indeed removing the resin did seem to help and solve the problem. So we'll, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, it's about an hour and a half after I first installed, so the, both the, the quote-unquote good chip and the bad chip have, uh, or the repaired chip, have uh, warmed up sufficiently, so I've changed the patch, so I've got the sub-oscillator on and no resonance, and so I'm going to play the same voice, so here's voice number three, four, five, and six, now here's one, and so that's the sub-oscillator, there's the, moving the cutoff on the sub-oscillator, that's voice one, so now here's voice two. So that they have different behaviors at certain settings, so they may need to be recalibrated. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the resonance to full, turn the sub-oscillator off, and now we'll just listen to the filter resonate. Three, four, five, six. So here's the quote-unquote good one. The resonance seems to sweep pretty well through, and now we'll do voice two. So the resonance may have some different scaling, but again, it may be the kind of thing that you can fix when you actually do the recalibration. And so if you're just going to run it in a nominal way, four, five, six, there's voice one, voice two, three, four, five, six, I've got to turn the oscillator on, of course, we'll put a sawtooth in there at about eight. That's voice two. And then we'll do voice one. And now we'll do the resonance. So all in all, I'd say that this is a technique and that can at least bring a, a 106 voice chip pretty much back to life. Whether it actually performs as well as new 
is a question, and I'm going to be investigating that over the next couple of weeks.